big game fishing, you automatically conjure up pictures of luxurious game boats equipped to fight those denizens of the deep. But in Cabo San Lucas, at the tip of the Baja Peninsula, you can still get out fishing for prime sporting fish at a fraction of the price of a huge game boat. The town used to be tiny when I first fished mile in there back in the 1970s, but now it's a full-blown holiday resort with hundreds of boats available for fishing. And this spot is known as the striped marlin capital of the world. You have great weather, warm sunshine, blue skies and blue water close to shore. It really is one of the places you should fish at least once in your lifetime. And this vintage footage will at least give you some idea of how the inshore fishing can go. While you can catch fish on lures, it's live bait fishing that gets you a lot of the really class action. And there's an entire industry of it in Cabo, just geared to supplying all the boats with their bait for the day. The day can often start when it's still dark and the cockles are crowing, as many of the better fish bite early on. You need to be getting baits in the water at dawn. Now along this desert peninsula, which is a thousand miles long, you've got a lot of beautiful wide open sandy beaches. Along here run a lot of inshore species. You can get Jack Ravel, they run up to maybe 20 pounds. Average would be around about five, six, seven pounds. You also get houndfish or needlefish, which are huge here, they run up to 22 pounds. They're like a great big garfish. You get the famous, for here anyway, roosterfish which are very unusual fish. We hope to show you some of those. They are here. We've talked to some of the skippers and they're here at the moment. And they'll run average about five pounds a piece, up to 30, with the world record is over 70. The other fish you get here, which could be a bane or a boon, depending whether you're a bait fisherman or a lure fisherman, are the Spanish mackerel. These Sierra type mackerel run to about 10 pounds and they've got unbelievable teeth on them. They bite almost anything in half. They chop the live baits in half. So what we're going to show you, first up is a look around the panga, what they come with. First thing, if you go marlin fishing or you hook up a big fish, you've got this fighting chair here. Now the fighting chair here is mounted on the bow of the boat. So should you hook a big fish, you can chase it down, you can run it down, and you've got a very good chance of catching it. Down at the bottom you've got the gimbal cup, just here, that's where your robot goes. And of course, it swivels as well, so you can push a chair in any direction. Follow the fish, and you can catch big fish, 500 pounds in here. <clears throat> what the panga does come equipped with its own rods and reels. They're generally pretty well used. These guys catch a lot of fish. You see the line gets a bit what we call tired. Tackle's a bit busted, drags aren't quite good. They'll catch fish, but they're definitely not the best. So if you do come, bring your own tackle, and you can have some great sport. You need about... 50 pound line down to about 15 pound line. Wide range of outfits and you have some great fun. If it gets really hot they also come with a nice canopy. In this case we've got it folded up because his uh, friend Jerry and I've got Mike, my son, out today. But if it gets really hot we can fold this up, make a nice sunshade. If you get a good quality panga it's going to have uh, a radio so you can listen in to what's going on with the rest of the fleet and for a safety factor if you break down you can radio in for help. And most of these guys know all the landmarks, but they like to keep in touch with each other, see where the fish are, see where they're biting, and off you go and catch them, hopefully. You get a second fighting or fishing chair in the stern of the boat. So you can hook up here in the back, you've got all the rod holders, strike the fish from here, locate it in the fighting chair, sit there and relax. If the fish looks like spooling you out, all you do is go up the front, take it round the centre console, the rod, drop it in the gimbal, and you can fight the fish from the front of the boat. Make sure you get a boat that takes a good live where you need to take quite a bit of bait. It's about 90% live bait fishing here. If you don't get live bait, you're going to struggle to catch the fish. So get a panga with a good live well. Okay, first thing we're going to try for this morning, we're going to try and catch some Sierra mackerel, which are going to be running about four to eight to 10 pounds. Big mackerel these are. 
and they chop a lot of bait. So the way to get around that is to fish these small Rapala lures. They've got a treble hook either side, but big point, you must, must put them on wire. So I've rigged these on the smallest wire I can get over here, 40 pounds, which is about a number five Malin Stealth wire. On the end of that, I've got a very small swivel because occasionally the fish will hit the swivel. If you have a big silver swivel on there, one Sierra will take the plug, second Sierra will come along and he'll hit the swivel and cut you off. So you need a small one like this. Then if you want to go a little bit bigger, go to one of these guys, which is like a Wahoo plug, has a slope face here, so it pulls very, very fast through the water. Again, rig it on wire, a little bit heavier because the fish might be bigger. And as you can see, this guy has certainly seen some action. For the live bait fishing, what we use are these short shank, wide gape, eagle claw, live bait hooks, especially designed for this type of fishing. Especially for rooster fish, you can mount them just on, on monofilament, run them back in the wake, slow trolling, and when the fish takes, give them some line, away you go. So let's go fishing. I had a day off from chasing the marlin to take my son Mike on his first inshore pank trip. He was ready to take on any fish and when trolling with live mackerel or cavalito along the shoreline you never really know what's going to hit you. It could be a rooster fish, a sierra or a hard fighting jack raval. Or if you go slightly deeper it could be one of the ocean racers, the line stripping wahoo. Even moving a panga 200 yards further out, you can hit those ocean pelagics. They really do come that close to shore. Wahoo are reportedly the fastest fish in the sea, and they hit both lures and baits at an incredible speed. They reckon up to 60 miles an hour. But you're always hooked more when you run your lures a bit deeper and at speed. The rod buckles over, and be prepared for a burnt thumb if you try and slow that spool on the first run. And most wahoo go straight into the cool box, as this species is one of the finest tasting fish in the world. Mmm, I can almost smell those fillets on the grill. This is definitely the place to take out your light tackle. Spinning rods with reels that take 15 pound line. And you can get all the string pulled in a serious fashion on some of those fast swimming predators that run along the surf edge. Literally just outside those huge Pacific rollers. Keep an eye open for the occasional road wave. Every year a boat gets turned over in that big surf, and I mean up to 30 footers. And if you use a boga grip rather than a gaff, you can return any fish alive, keeping just those you want for an evening meal. Just after Jerry caught this Jack Raval, Mike had his first hookup. This inshore fishing is ideal for the family. They feel safe being close to land. The sea is generally kind to you off Cabo, and it doesn't take long to get back to port if it does cut up rough, which it really does. This is a rooster fish, a member of the Jack family, so it's a dogged fighter. They do make good eating, but they make such an impression with those huge dorsal fibers that I rarely take them. Maybe keep one and let the others go for another day. Like 
After the roosters come right on the surface, their fancy dorsal fin trailing in the air. And although this might look like a good size, it's only barely average, as the rooster fish grows to an incredible 60 pounds. They hit surface popping lures and an explosion of spray, and they can easily get a whole live bait inside their cavernous mouth. A true predator of the shallows, they can often be seen while shore fishing, chasing small bait fish right through the face of a breaking wave. In fact, there is often a whole band of lure fishermen that specialise in catching rooster fish from the shore. It can often be important to troll your baits or lures right in tight to the shore, although I've often found the better fish to be in slightly deeper water. What a setting, and what weather, not a cloud in the sky. Pangas, even themselves, come in different sizes you can get. Pangas like this, which is a standard size, and you can get what's called a super panga, which has a bigger outboard on the back. They can range anything in size from about 15 feet up to about 25 feet, which is quite big. Now, one of the first things you have to realise, all the different species you catch in the ocean, you can catch in a panga. The only thing that you're governed by is the weather. And here in Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, you certainly generally got the weather. Fabulous blue sky, flat seas, deep blue water, and the benefit of a surf line. One of the other advantages of fishing from a panga like this is it's ideal for taking out a family. Bonus on Cabo San Lucas is the fact that just in here from the rocks, you're not maybe half a mile offshore, you can see the fleet are in here, all the charter boats, the small boats, uh, they're just drifting over there, maybe six, eight hundred yards outside the beach there, and that's where the yellowfin tuna, bonito and black skipjack tuna are running. So you don't have to come out very far, and you can take the family out, it's safe, a lot of the weather here is uh, flat calm as you can see it here, and let's just show you how we're going to fish for these. The way they fish for these yellowfin tuna is you have to get a small bait called a sardinish, which is a sardine about this big. We'll show you what they look like, and they net them close into the beaches. They need to go out very early in the morning to catch these, and you, you chum them, you loose feed them, just throw them in the water, a few live ones and a few dead ones, and the tuna will come and find them, and they'll start busting on the surface to get them. Now, these are the fish, sardines. Little small guys like this, you just hook them live through the back on a small hook, about 30 pound line, and maybe a 2-0 wide gate, uh, short shank live bait hook, 20 or 30 pound line, little lever drag multiply or bigger, whatever you've got, and you just free line it in the wake, drop it out there, feed the line out, and after you've got a lot of line out, maybe 30, 40 yards, get it out there again. About 30 or 40 yards, run it back in the, uh, in the drift, and you'll feel a tug, strike, and you're in business. This sort of fishing is absolutely wonderful taking out the family. Uh, you can do half days fishing and at 25 bucks an hour, which is what it, the present rate is at the moment, you can't really uh, dispute the fact that it is great value for money. The tiny sardines sink slowly through the clear Pacific water and those yellowfin tuna often come right up close to the panga as they crash into the baits. It's a really exciting way of fishing. And water being sprayed onto the surface makes it look like a shoal of sardines scattering. You then follow up with a single live sardine, feeding it back slowly with the other three offerings until you feel the take. Trust me, those tuna hit at speed is not so much a nibble as a full blown rod wrencher. So tell us what you got there, Mike. Tuna. Ooh, you've got to get pulled in. Okay. What type do you think? Is it? Yellowfin. Thing. You reckon it's a yellowfin? Maybe what? sit here, look. Sit down there, mate. Right here. That's better. Where are you? Can you see him in there, Charlie? No, I can't just see I can't see him. Well, just now I saw a little. I saw a little. That's little. it, you got him, mate.
Both hands on the rod. That's it. You got it. Pull up hard. And wind down. I can see him. I can see look him. For him. Don't look for him, Mike. Just find him. He's the there. He's, he, I can see him definitely. He's down there. I can Did you still see something see him. flash? Sorry. No, Dad, put the camera down there and you can see him. If I put the camera down, down there, the He's going under the boat. Just My God, I see him. Yeah. Fat one, man. What a fat one. What a fat one. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught. No way. You caught big ones, so that's a real yellowfin tuna. See the yellow on your side? Yeah. Should I put him in, Dad? Not yet. You won't put him in, he'll cut you. <laughs> you need metal gloves. What was that like, Mike? Fun. Is that your first tuna? Yep. Can you catch another one? Yep. Charlie? Yes. OK. Yes. Whee! Whee! Michael Pullen's first tuna. Oh, Big Gelafi. Well done, yeah, Michael. You can get a lot of satisfaction from watching your family catch fish, just as long as they leave the biggest of the day for Dad. And letting your kids catch a hard fighting yellowfin tuna is like killing the cat by choking it with cream. It's the pinnacle of light tackle fishing. You never get an easy tuna. They all dig deep with their regular nodding on the rod top. Keep maximum pressure on them at all times and that fish should be yours. Now most anglers know that fresh tuna are one of the healthiest fish to eat. You can return them alive, but you need to unhook them quickly. They don't last more than a few seconds out of the water. But this one is destined for the family meal at a Cabo restaurant, so it's a one-way ticket to the dinner table. Finally, you can't leave a panga without dropping some fresh baits down to the deep water reef. These are loaded with big fish, just like grouper. And yes, they are great to eat as well. Yeah. Very nice. Little the bit. best. For, for eating, the best. Yeah. Grouper. Okay, you bring him over. Got the... Yeah, good eating fish. Huh? Yeah. Okay, you bring him up, hold him up for the camera. Closer to you. To the side. Big smile. So there you have it. Small boat fishing with a family. Totally awesome. And not only is Cabo a great place for fishing, it's great for a vacation as well. It's the open blue skies, the clear Pacific Ocean, those pure white sand beaches that stretch for miles without another person on them. For the fisherman, it's as close to heaven as you could ever want to get.